in analyzing the structure, the pictorial structure of Pieter Bruegel's Winter, also called The Hunters, let's look first at the trees. With my little red marker, I'm going to show you even the tree limbs, how they frame the shot. They keep her eye inside of the picture plane, inside of the picture. Not only that, but even the peaks back here show us how the artist composed his scenic structure to keep our eye entertained and within the picture frame or plane. Now notice here, the dogs, they're pointing toward our center of interest, pointing that way, pointing. Now what is our center of interest? What is it he wanted us most to see? I think it's our skaters back here. Everything in here points to the skaters, the tree roofs, this line points to our skaters. This line points to our skaters. This undulating line wraps around and comes in and encloses our skaters. This is winter. This plane, look. This line. All of it indicate to us what the painter wanted us to concentrate on. I notice even this, the flames of that burning fire kind of loop down and his head continues on a, a, a circular motion here. Notice that. And then what is the center of interest? What holds the whole pictorial plane together as far as I'm concerned is the bird. He's kind of the anchor. He holds the whole frame together. The whole pictorial frame together. We have this line. This line swoops down. Everything is composed so beautifully and yet we don't notice it really. It's there but it's done so naturally that it entertains our eye, keeps us in the picture plane. It has wonderful depth, kind of a one point perspective, but I think more in tune with the atmospheric perspective. Thank you very much. Let's go on to another part of the structure of this famous painting. Considering the entire painting, we assume someone is standing a little bit higher than than the hunters on the left. That's another name for this painting, the hunters. They might be looking out a window on the third floor, a little bit higher than our folks here. So their horizon line, or eye level, we also call it. I'll put it up here, eye level. Handheld, excuse me. Eye level is also this. That's the level both our eyes are looking at, the view we have from our particular vantage point. Horizon line, in other words, that horizon line would disappear into the distance behind the mountains. All orthogonals, we call them, emanate from this particular vanishing point. Thank you. Hi, 
by John Hart again. Now a few more items that would be of interest. I mentioned perspective. I mentioned one point perspective. I would assume our vanishing point is right here. And if you've noticed the orthogonals, let's go up a little bit higher, uh, pretty much there, with following the blue lines. That's our one point perspective, a little bit higher. All these lines converge to your vanishing point. Not only that, we have what we call atmospheric perspective. These mountains in the distance have a blue haze on them. They're not as sharp, of course, as our foreground figures, shrubs and trees. So our eye goes back in the distance. Haze, blue recedes. Browns, reds come toward us and dominate the frame. Anyway, there's a one-point perspective. Now let's look at some other elements that keep our eye entertained. I mentioned before the, uh, the uh, flames themselves. Our ladies are burning some wood or something. And uh, look at this. He brings her eye down here on that little kind of oval. And now we're talking about ovals, concentric circles or ovals that keep our eye entertained. Remember the dogs are also pointing to our center of interest, which I mentioned are our skaters here, I like to think. We mentioned about our tree branches keeping our eye in the, in the frame, excuse me, and even these distant mountains curve in to keep our eye in. And of course our famous bird, which is the fulcrum of the whole composition, holds it together. Without the bird, we wouldn't have this happening. Also, let's remember, I'm going to pick a different color here. Our trees act as verticals, vertical elements that also give stability to the composition. So if all these elements happening that keep our eye within the, entertained actually, within the picture plane, the picture frame, if you will. We have foreground, we have middle ground, we have background, so we call these receding planes. Brilliantly composed composition, d design. Thank you. <laughs>